Welcome to Pastor Chat. My name is Diana, this is Ron, and today we are talking about blended step families. Ron, thank you so much for being with us, for bringing your wife. You've been married for 34 years. Is that what you're telling me? That's correct, 34 years. I love it. And you've spent a career um, Mm -hmm. in marriage and family therapy, helping specifically blended step families. Tell us a little bit about God's heart for step families. Oh, my goodness. Uh, You know, most of the families in the Bible that we can look at are complex families of one shape, size, or another. Mm -hmm. This is not a new story. Right? This is an old story. God has always worked in families of various type, uh, shapes and sizes. And, uh, and so just being able to come alongside blended families, you know, one of the things I really have come to believe is that healthy blended families are redemptive organisms in the lives of children and adults. Mm-hmm. It's, when it's done well, it's a blessing to so many people. We actually have research to suggest that the positivity that comes out of a healthy step family negates some of the negativity that a child may have experienced when their parents divorced in the first place. Hmm. Um, you know, post death, there's blessing to families. Now, step families done poorly add pain, hmm. hurt, chaos to people's lives. So it can be a change agent for good, or it can be something that just makes life even harder for people. And so, what a blessing it is for me to be able to come alongside families and churches who are trying to help families Mm -hmm. and help you guys do a better job of helping them turn it into a redemptive opportunity. Absolutely, it matters and it has impact for generations to come. It does. So if we were to get really practical, the folks listening would want to know, um, Ron, tell us, how do you cook a step family? Talk to us about that. Love that question. It's one of my central teaching points. Well, since we call them blended families, you might think you use a blender. Don't do that because (laughs) blenders have blades. I don't know if you've noticed, right? They chop up everything you put in there and they take away its uniqueness, its identity, and then they force all the ingredients into relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds like a good idea um, saying to a child, hey, look, I know he's not your dad, but he's a nice guy. Love him anyway. That's a blender move. Mm -hmm. What a child hears is, what, you're going to make me love him? And by the way, I have a dad. He may be deceased, but he's still my dad. And you can't take him out of my heart. You can't chop up my dad and replace him. So that kind of mentality as you walk it out in life actually works against your family. What is far more productive is having a crockpot mentality. You cook a step family with a crockpot, which means, how do you you use crockpot? You dump all the ingredients in, you turn it on, and you just kind of let low heat and time work on the ingredients. What happens? Low heat over time softens things. Yep. They warm up and they start sharing of themselves. Patience is everything. <laughs> your heart may be eager for your family to come together and everybody to gel, but the more you try to push it, the less you get. The more patient you are, the more intentional in a way that you have to have some heat, right? You can't just go cold. You gotta have some heat, but you do it at a pace where the ingredients can receive it. And all of a sudden, things just tend to work better. But here's the deal. Crockpots take six or seven or eight hours, depending on what you're cooking. That's right. There's nothing quick about it. Blended families take time, depending on the age of children, how much they're with you, are they in the other home some of the time? Like, there's a whole lot of factors, so there's no way to be able to pin it or predict it for any one family. The bottom line is, it often takes years to really find that fit. You can get there be diligent, be, uh, just persevere and keep going. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. one of the things I've learned from your readings, from your books, your articles, is that there's a lot happening on the inside of kids in the yeah. midst of this blending process, absolutely in the couple, but specifically in the kids. Mm-hmm. Could you shine a light a little bit on what, what's happening inside of them? It's more than what happens at face value. And yeah. how do parents come alongside? Loss and uh, loyalty are two um, concepts we teach a lot about. Everybody in a blended family has been through loss, in particular children have. Um, There was a death, a divorce, a a breakup, some sort of story that created the opportunity for the blended family to be born. And honestly, for, for, for some children, there's a lot of loss in the new family coming together. And so they have to figure out new stuff and sharing a bedroom and new school and 
um, I, and I like you, but I don't love you, and so I don't want you to be my parent. There's just all kinds of interesting nuances to that. So having a, a heart for their sadness is important. Having compassion for that. The other side of that is loyalty. Loyalty has to do with I'm loyal to my biological siblings and parents, first and foremost. Those are the people I'm deeply invested in having and maintaining a relationship with. Even and if it's not healthy. Even if it's not a healthy relationship. I mean, yeah. You can be a jerk as a parent and your kids still love you. They'll, yeah. they'll take you back as soon as you walk back into their world. Um, step parents, if, if, if a child perceives a step parent as trying to replace the other biological, if a stepmom, you're trying to replace my mom, forget it. You're never going to win. But if they see you as somebody who says, no, I respect your relationship with your mom. I encourage your relationship with your mom. I speak well of your mom in front of you. I do everything I can to foster your relationship with your mother. I never get in the way of that. I'm not competing with your mom. That is respectable. Mm -hmm. That helps a child go, oh, okay, good. You know who you are and who you aren't. And, and I can see you as somebody then who's an addition to my life. One of the terms floating around these days, a lot of people are liking, is a bonus parent instead of a step parent, bonus parent. Well, be a bonus. Don't replace. That really does make it easier for you and the child to develop a connection and, and relationship over time. If you were to give one practical piece of advice to step parents yeah. um, or how a biological parent can set a step parent up for success, what would you say? Uh, working around... Uh, authority, consequences, and, and punishment in particular are delicate matters. Biological parents have to be what we call primary, especially in the early phase of a blended family, meaning you are the one who <laughs> takes away the toy, hands down the consequence, takes away the car keys, says you're grounded. Whatever, whatever the hard stuff is of parenting, the behavioral limits, we call it, that needs to be the biological parent handing that down because the step parent is the newbie in town. Like, like, like uh, that takes a lot of relational equity with a child for you to say, give me your car keys. Uh, step parent can be behind the scenes 100% working with the biological parent, making the decision to take the car keys, but the bio parent does the work. Why? We're giving the step parent and step child space and time to figure out a relationship. As that relational equity grows, then you can step more and more into the hard parts of parenting. In the meantime, step parents can be great. Okay, discipline biblically doesn't mean punishment. It means teaching and training. And you could do all that stuff as a step parent. You could be a mentor, a coach, however you want to think of yourself. Come alongside them, help them with life, right? Speak into their world, be a godly influence. That's all fantastic stuff. Just leave the hard stuff to the bio parent for a while until you kind of feel like, all right, we're there. We've, we've figured this out. It's time I can start adding to that part of, of the parenting. That's great, Ron. This wisdom is so rich. It's so practical, so helpful. Um, and we've only scratched the surface. So if somebody's listening and they want more, how can they connect with you? How could they find that? I'm glad you asked. You know, for years, people said, I've been doing step family ministry for about 27 years now. And Everybody complained, you can't find any books, you can't find any resources. That is not true anymore. I have good news for you. Go to familylife.com slash blended. That's where, that's where I live, familylife.com slash blended. We're the largest blended family ministry in the world. We got eight books, nine books, curriculum, uh, resources. I do a podcast on a regular basis, free articles online, videos, YouTube, Facebook. It's all there, right? Pick your delivery method. You can really get some good stuff. You told me this church subscribes to Right Now Media. Mm -hmm. uh, my curriculum called The Smart Step Family, based on my book by the same title, is available on Right Now Media. And so it's free to you. You can stream it and watch it by yourself. It's even better when you do it with a group of people. I know you have a blended ministry here. I am such an advocate for small groups, for blended couples. Do yourself a favor, get in relationship with others. And I think you'll feel that growth really coming on for your family. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us for Pastor Chat. The information will be in the links around you and we'll see you next time.